Welcome, everyone. I'm Tiffany Bird, Salesforce NFT and web consultant, and also community leader for Blockchain Blazers. The aim of this group is to collaborate, educate, empower, and share knowledge about the Salesforce NFT cloud and the world of blockchain and Web3. Also to grow into a global community of Salesforce NFT cloud experts, where we harness the power of Salesforce NFT cloud coming soon and deliver innovative projects to existing and new Salesforce customers. We also have not one, but two special guests. Um, I'll reintroduce Gary Brandelier, who's the Emerging Tech and Product Senior Director of Project Management, sorry, Product Management for Salesforce. And we also have Max Camporetto, co-founder, Salesforce Web3 Studio. Hello, Max. Thank you for joining. Hey, crew. Uh, Gary, good to see you in the office. I'm Gary Brandelier, based in uh, San Francisco. Obviously, you hear my accent. It's typical American. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, of course. I'm Belgian. Uh, speak French. Um, let me present my screen. It's been mm -hmm. seven years that uh, I'm at Salesforce, uh, and then we we took that crazy uh, idea of um, thinking what can we do with uh, what's coming up with uh, with Web three. So, first of all, forward looking statements. You know, um, this product is not yet GA. It will be GA uh, very soon. But in the meantime, you know, buy the product for what it is today and not for what it will be tomorrow. Um, in terms of what we see, so we see customer expectation are rising. That's not new to Web3. That's just uh, what's happening in the world for the last, um, I would say, 15 years or even more. Um, but what we saw, very interestingly enough, was uh, more and more engagement using Web3 technologies. Um, and I think the first use case we saw that really um, showed us what was the type of customer engagement that you could do with this was the one from Adidas, where Adidas did an a, a NFT drop a while ago now, um, where they released NFTs, they did that on a custom website and so on. Um, but what was very interesting is that they were linking the NFT to also a physical product and they could, you could redeem the physical product with the NFT and so on. When you think about the customer engagement behind this, it's everlasting. And what I mean by this is that they started the project October of um, last year, so actually uh, uh, one year and a half ago, um, and it's still going on. Um, they see customer engaged very much on the, their Discord channel. They see a lot of people um, on a daily basis asking what's next, what's going to happen, and so on. So they, they really realize the power that the uh, NFT could have in creating communities. And so we are like, okay, that's the first example. That's the first thing we saw. And then we saw a couple of other customers coming in, asking us what we are doing there uh, in Web3. And so we looked at a little bit at different uh, items. And then, then what we realized first was, okay, can we uh, make sure that all customers can sell their NFTs on Commerce Cloud? So many customers are using Commerce Cloud today from Salesforce. Could they sell NFTs, which are digital collectible, digital products, the same way as they would sell a physical product? So for a physical product, you sell, sell it on your e-commerce site. Can you also sell your NFT on your e-commerce site? The aim is not to replace OpenSea, but more thinking of for primary sale, for the first time you sell the product, generally speaking, you do that on your website. And after that, it's of course happening on different marketplaces. Um, so the, the aim here is the same would be to say, hey, I'm whichever brand doing whichever type of product. I want my physical and digital product to be sold from my website directly. I can do that. And from there, if you resell that uh, product later on on OpenSea, on Sowear, or on whatever you want, that's uh, still uh, working pretty well. So we are looking at the, this customer expectation rising. We are looking at e-commerce, and we are like, OK, we need to help our customers to do something there. On the other side, what we, we saw as well is that marketers are really looking at, right now, there is a recession. Right now, there is a huge amount of you know uh, complexities in, in doing business. How can I reach new audiences? How can I 
reach people that might not have been uh, really interested by my brand so far, especially younger audience, uh, Gen Z, Alpha, they are coming, very different way of uh, engaging with them than with uh, millennials and so on. Um, and also like, what about loyalty program? When you look at loyalty program, many of them have not been changed for years. It's like you go shop at a brand, you get points, that's it. And the points are more or less useful. Um, and then the last piece is future proofing the business, which is more like, how can we get back customers into our products? And what I mean by this is that when you look at all the Web3 projects, many of them were co-creation, or at least were uh, projects where the customer were very engaged into, okay, what should be done next with that NFT? What should be done next with the group? And so on and so on. So we saw these two trends and we are like, okay, that's great but um, it's going to be tough for many brands. What I mean by this is that what we see so far, we have brands that are, um, I would call them Web2, even though there is not su such a thing of Web2, Web3, it's more like Web2 native, they started in Web2, uh, maybe even in Web1, and they don't know how to jump in Web3. And then we have the reverse, which is brands that are like in Web3, they understand very much how to use all these technologies, but they sometimes reinvent a little bit the wheel from web 2 uh, how can we merge these two how can we help and how can we um, especially support the customer engagement because as you know many times with nfts with and with blockchain you hear about the word utility so you give a token for some utility when you think about it utility is just a customer experience it's a customer engagement where do you manage your customer engagement generally speaking in salesforce so that's, that's what we are seeing. So how can we help there? Well, there are a couple of issues. You know, yeah, there is a lot of project going on. When we ask some uh, customers, how do you manage your Web3 project today to tell us on Excel, which is pretty funny to, uh, to see because we are like, oh, okay, you have your customer base in Excel instead of a CRM. That's interesting. Uh, but there are also other type of, of you know, issues and gaps that you need to, to cover. In, in many ways, I would say Web3 is still, for many people, very hard to un understand. Even when you think about the terminology, there is minting, NFT, token, gas fee, and so on. All that is very hard for, for people to understand. So we are trying to make it as easy as possible to get into Web3 um, without maybe uh, hitting all the walls that you, you might hit, generally speaking. So that's what we see on the market. When you look at the type of things that all customers are interested in. They are inter interested in creating new customer experiences. So can I, for example, tell you, you come get the NFT on my website, then you have a physical event happening maybe in New York or somewhere, and then you, you continuously engage with the community. Second piece is more like, can I simply build new products? And I think on that one, more and more what we see is not really, okay, let's build uh, more um, digital collectible or digital product, it's much more, can we uh, link the physical product with the digital product? Um, I think we, you have all seen that the, the market for NFTs, we are not at all into the speculation. We, we don't care about the speculation of, of that market. What we are caring of is like the customer engagement. And so what you see more and more is NFTs are given away for free or given away with physical product. So that's very interesting to see how we can support on that one. And then the loyalty, Enhanced loyalty would be more like, I have already a, a loyalty program. How can I enhance it, augment it with a blockchain and the new customer data? All this data on blockchain uh, so far is not really used. And as I was saying, like we see even customers using Excel to track uh, who has the token, who should get which utility and so on. That doesn't scale so well. So that's where we can help. So what we did, we said, okay, we are going to introduce um, Salesforce Web3. So we are going to allow you to connect back the Web3 data into your CRM and then allow you to create uh, NFTs whenever you want. So under that Salesforce Web3 brand, what we are doing really is releasing two products. One is uh, NFT management, which is really allowing you to create NFTs collection very fast. And I'll demo that in a few seconds. And so the use case there would be, I'm a brand. I want to create my NFTs for whichever customer engagement. So because I want to give NFTs away with uh, my physical product, or I want to sell NFTs, like up to you. You can create an, the NFT yourself. You can deploy the smart contract. 
uh, and so on directly from Salesforce. What we do there is really with a few clicks, you can deploy a smart contract. It's audited. Um, we, you can adjust the, temp the, the templates slightly. You can adjust where you publish your uh, smart contract and so on. It's extremely easy. It's as easy as I have even have a pilot customer that didn't know about blockchain and that's deployed very quickly on the, on the chain. And then he was asking me, oh, can I change this? I'm like, no, that's the purpose of blockchain. You cannot change the smart contract after. You can update a few parameters, but can I change the whole thing? So it was really interesting to see someone that didn't know anything about blockchain could use this product which was very good for me as a product manager to see. So that's one, and I'll demo this, so um, like this, you will see exactly uh, what we do. The second thing, um, as I was saying, like for us, minting the NFT is just the beginning. It's a customer journey. We are not here to let brands just sell NFTs, and that's it. It's not a money grab uh, scheme here. It's really more customer engagement. So how do you do that? Well, you distribute the, the NFT for free or not. So you can do that on a commerce site. You do that wherever you want. You create a community, hopefully, and then you want personalized experiences, which is essentially utility. Do I get access to discount? Do I get access to special page on the site? Do I token get my, my website? And so on and so on. So that's really what we are looking for. To do so, we are thinking of, all right, but this data, now you, let's say you created your NFT with us or not, you publish that on Polygon or on Ethereum, um, and now you want to have the data back in Salesforce because you want to now manage the utility. How can you do this? So that's where we introduced Web3 Connect, which is allowing you to say, okay, I have my smart contract already. Maybe it's done with Salesforce or not. It doesn't matter. Um, I want to bring that data back in Salesforce so that I can manage better the utility. Like for example, which one is interacted with this uh, smart contract, which one has the token, which one should receive a higher uh, uh, tier of the loyalty program and so on and so on. So that's really what we are thinking of, bring back the data so that you can then manage the customer experience. So that's the two products. NFT management allows you to mint NFTs, to create NFTs. Web3 Connect allows you to take the, take the data back from blockchain inside uh, your CRM. One thing we do, very important for us, core values, um, I mean, our values are extremely important for us. Uh, trust is number one for us, of course. You, I think, all know that. So we enter this space with our core values, meaning like we make, make sure that we have uh, audited smart contract. We have multi-signature as a, as a feature and so on for on the trust item. Um, we absolutely want to look at how can we change how we do consent uh, and manage consent on Web3 and on Web2 even. Uh, and then, of course, we, so far we are using only uh, chains that are proof of um, proof of stake. So we support Polygon and Ethereum. We might support more, um, but we will not support uh, proof of work. So Bitcoin uh, chain right now not not, not possible with our solution. Um, couple of guidelines. I think that's very important uh, just to make sure as well because we we had like. I would say some people reaching out to us and say, oh, can I use this quickly to do a quick project? I want to uh, see and test. Okay, fine, but why? Is it for customer engagement or just for speculation? If it's for speculation, you can go to another company. We are not in that game. What we are in the game for is really the customer engagement. So what is the job to be done? How can you avoid the speculative use case? Uh, is this accessible? Is it afford affordable? Can it really provide utility and benefits? Uh, is your smart contract audited? Are your customers aware of the risk uh, that are coming with Web3 and how to prevent them? Are they not going to be fished uh, and so on and so on? So can you prevent all that? Um, some brands, we are not even aware blockchain data is permanent. So hey, be careful. Whatever you do right now is there forever. Um, collect the data only if you really have the consent. And then um, we, what we saw with a couple of pilots is that quickly when brands are releasing NFTs, you have fake NFTs appearing as well. There is not much that brands can do unless connect, uh, connect, contacting the, the platform where these NFT collection are. But can you also make sure that you have a team that is monitoring this and able to take action if there is an issue uh, in terms of fraud? And then the, the two last is just really making sure that, you know, this is just for long-term engagement. Like, don't release the NFT, think it's going to fly by itself, and then six months from now, your project is, is done and, and you 
kind of forgot about the community. We really want brands to come and say, okay, this is a new way to en engage with customers. It's long term. Uh, it's going to take one year, two years, three years of engagement where you build the community and so on. So do you have the team? Do you have the funding for this? Uh, can you make that happen? So th these are the guidelines we have. And then I think we can go in a demo. I have a couple of additional slides that I can show just after. Any questions so far? Just one from me, um, yep. Gary, and in terms of the, the smart contract, is would there be a, a versioning option? That um... so, no versioning option in in the sense of once it's deployed, it's deployed. Um, but you are, you can update a couple of parameters, and I'll explain that a little bit later in the demo if you want. Um, one thing that we do though on our side is as we provide the smart contract template, we are going to update that smart contract template on a on a pretty regular basis. So what we do is we add methods in the smart contract. So for example, you could deploy today. Uh, a, smart, a smart contract with us. And then a couple of uh, weeks or a month from now, we had a couple of new methods and then you could deploy a new contract. But at that stage, it's a complete new uh, contract. You cannot update your last uh, contract with the new methods. That's just impossible. But the, the aim there would be to say, hey, start with what, whatever we have today. And then as we see the space moving, we look at what are the best practice methods that are in contracts and uh, can we add them back. So, for example, an example of that was the first smart contract we had uh, was not supporting airdropping, so uh, basically dropping NFTs to a wallet. Um, and so now we are doing that, so we have a method for that, for example. What we don't do, which is very important to know, is we don't provide wallets. So we will not be in the business of providing digital wallets to brands. For that, we have multiple partners, uh, we have Ledger, there is Crossmint, there is Magic, like there is many, many uh, wallet companies that are very aware of what we are doing um, and uh, knows how to uh, use our solution with their solution. Any other questions? All right, then I'll do the demo. So here it will be more about NFT management, but I can explain a little bit as well of Web3 Connect. So, in this case, it's been a while I didn't use the demo and I could not try uh, for a while. So let's see, hopefully this one is working well. Um, but so essentially here, I'm on my private workspace. I want to create a new set of NFTs. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to define an attribute set. So it's just going to be, I'm going to use uh, this one, for example, and I'm going to call this, uh, let's call this uh, trail, um, I will actually call it trail, tr just trail, uh, because that all this is uh, finishing on uh, or ending on the blockchain. So I don't want people to uh, uh, think this is a trailblazer NFT or whatever. Um, so here, what I'm doing behind the scene, I'm literally creating essentially a product a category, um, and I'm adding that to a catalog. So there is a, a, a small flow that is happening behind the scene. We'll see if it's working or not. It's a little bit slow. Um, but all in all, what's happening there is that I'm going to use, mm, unfortunately, I have an issue with my process. Okay, fine. I'll use another another org. That's not a problem. I'll just use this one then. All right. Uh, okay, give me a second because I will have to take my, uh, I don't want you to see my login details. So I will stop sharing and Share again my screen, a few seconds. Um, all right, so here. Up. Um, give me a second because I have many, many login details. And so I need to retrieve the one that is making sense for this uh, demo. Oh, you know what? I can do it another way. I will. Uh, um, actually, I will I will try again with the same org first, and then I will do the long demo rather than the short demo. So, give me a second here. I'm going to share my screen again and see if I can show you here. So I'll try to save again just to see. 
Um, so what, just so that you know, basically what we are doing uh, here, you see that okay, it, it works. So that's why I started again. So essentially, what we are doing every time you create a category, we are creating a voucher, which is one of the capabilities that are linked to trust. Um, every of our collection, every of our methods are protected via a voucher. That voucher is given to the user only when they come on a website that is powered by Salesforce, or there is an API call you can do as well. So the voucher failed, and in fact, it's simply because we are signing something behind the scene, and probably um, it's been a while I didn't use the org, so the, the first signature didn't pass. So all in all, what happened here, I just created a product. The product itself has the attribute set NTO Centennial Snowboard. So what does it mean? It means that my background top bottom will be a type of uh, parameters for my NFTs. So I could say, okay, I'm going to create one NFT. The only thing I'm doing here is just creating the metadata. There is nothing yet on the um, on the blockchain. And I'm just going to say, for example, here, the background will be black, the bottom will be an astronaut, the top will be circle. We could potentially generate the image on the fly. So there is a company called Trickit. Uh, they are on the app exchange and they can generate this kind of image where, for example, you could say, OK, great, the snowboard is uh, like this. It can be in 3D, in 2D, whatever you want. Um, or you could say, I have already all my pictures. I just want to uh, list them here on uh, my Salesforce org. So that flow is a little bit depending on what you need. Um, but what you, could, you can do as well is, in this case, I want 10 NFTs. So I'm going to generate nine additional NFTs. And all of them will be unique. So that's something that we are very much pushing for our customers is to make sure that uh, all the NFTs are, are unique. So the parameters, you will see if you combine all of them, all of them will be unique. And now I have my 10 NFTs. So my 10 NFTs, what I did, which, you know, it's part of the, of the process, but for the demo I didn't show you, is I added a file automatically. So automatically I uploaded a file. In theory, you would go upload the file, upload the media and so on. For the sake of the demo, I'm just doing it automatically. And we have my category. So under a product, I have multiple variation, which is my NFT metadata. And then I have my category, which is the uh, NFT collection itself. So in this case now, there is nothing yet on the blockchain. I need to publish all this. So the first thing I'm going to do is publish to IPFS. What's very important to know is that we have the concept of roles as well. So it's not only you know the typical Salesforce profile uh, and roles and so on that will define who can create this, but it's also, okay, does your wallet has the right role? So in this case, I'm going to refresh. You'll see that here it got published on IPFS. So I have all my, uh, yeah, unfortunately I'm at the Salesforce tower and the Salesforce, at the Salesforce tower, we are not allowed to uh, connect to IPFS. So I cannot show you this, but if you, if I give this link to you, I'm going to give that in the call directly. Uh, you will see that you have all the data in IPFS. So what it will be, it will be basically JSON blob with the parameters and the image as well. What you can do then is to say, okay, now I need to deploy this on the blockchain. And that's where parameters are, are coming into play. So what kind of parameters do we have? So in this case, you can say how many tokens. So in this case, there is 10. The blockchain in this case will be Polygon. The symbol will be NTO, it doesn't matter, it's just a symbol of your collection. The price of the NFT, the status so far is metadata uploaded. The sales type is extremely important. What we can do there is either general or exclusive. So we can say there is a VIP list or not, a Nalo list or not. Uh, and the second thing is we can do open or closed sale, which is, is there, is that collection you come, you buy from the collection, but you don't know yet which NFT you get, and there is a reveal after that would be a closed sale, or do you want to go with an open sale where whoever can buy whichever of the NFTs from the collection? The other thing you can do as well is saying how many tokens you buy per transaction and how many token um, maximum per wallet. So in this case, one wallet could come and take the 10 NFTs, but of course you would want to make sure that not uh, one single wallet can uh, buy and take all the NFTs from your collection. So I'm going to deploy this on Polygon. To deploy, so we have the concept of role, as I was saying. So in this case, you will see here, I'll go after um, to show you the roles, but we can also do multi-signature. So probably here in this demo, I will do one single signature, but you could say, hey, 
you know, you, you need to have multiple wallets from multiple different person in your org to confirm this transaction. So I'm going to confirm this one. That's going to publish on Polygon. In the meantime, I'm going to explain the roles. So on the roles, I have my wallet that has been um, linked here. So it's already deployed, by the way. Uh, so I have who is getting the price, the revenue, whenever this NFT is sold, if this NFT is uh, supposed to be uh, not free. Who is getting the royalty? We can do multiple royalties as well. We can do up to 10. So you could say, hey, you have royalties that are getting 2% to a charity, 5% to the artist, and so on and so on. We can do that very easily. Who is managing the contract? So who is deploying? So that's me right now. So that's why I, I can do this. And who is the finance admin, which is the person that will be releasing the funds from the contract to the price payout wallet, for example, and to the royalty payout wallet. So that's the type of role you can add. You can also add a minter role, which is allowing you to come and mint on the fly on the wallet, uh, sorry, on the smart contract. Um, and that would allow you as, as well to cover gas fees and so on. So in this case, as I was saying, the contract has been deployed. So you will see that this is completely real as a demo. So if I go on uh, the Blockchain Explorer, I will have to go on, okay, let me type it in. I'm a lazy guy, so I'm always trying to uh, not type, but um, this time I need to do it. So, all right, here I'll search for my contract. And you see that my contract has been deployed one minute ago on the blockchain. Um, this is pretty amazing because when you think about it, like for me, if you ask me, hey, Gary, how do you deploy a contract on the blockchain without your solution? I have a vague idea how to do this. Here, I did it in a few seconds. I could set up my metadata. I could upload on IPFS. I could deploy on uh, Polygon. I could have deployed on Ethereum if I wanted. And now I can activate the sale. So at that stage, that's now calling the methods of our smart contract. And we are going to say yes. If people come on this smart contract, they will be able to mint the token. So in this case, I'm going to activate the sale. It's going to um, uh, give me back the data. And now that the sale is complete, I can do other actions like pausing the connection. If there is any issue with fraud or whatever, you could pause the connection, withdraw the funds, deactivate the sale, or reveal. So that's that's pretty much it in terms of NFT management. You can uh, you can see my transaction here. So I activate this. So you can deploy your collection, and now you will be able to sell the. I see a question. I will try to see the question from this, if I can see. Uh, chat history. All right. Hi. So Hi. I see a question from Kevin. Who would be the customer that purchases use NFT studio? Will it be a company that produces NFTs, or will it be a user who would want to manage the NFT? It would be definitely a company. So the use case we have here and the people we are looking for is really enterprise brands in retail and, 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 and things like this. So think about um, any company that is producing already products that are more B2C, uh, so shoes, cars, uh, any retail company essentially, that has already a good sense of brand and that has a lot of IP that they didn't use yet, uh, can they give back to the customers? Can they create loyalty program? Uh, with this, can they further engage with their customers? Can they, for example, create even communities of small communities of co-creators for some of their products? Um, that's really the idea. So it, re it would really be brands um, using Salesforce and being able to deploy their collection. We, in general, I, I would say we have for, for this product, we have also a set of questions that people need to answer before they can even use it because we absolutely want to avoid that people want to uh, use this for any uh, bad solution. And Kevin, why would they use this? So the, that's a great question. The, the reason why, I think there is, I would say two main reasons before even going to, to more reason. One is simply like, hey, many of these companies, they have no way to pay a Web3 developer. Like it's very hard to find Web3 developers. It's also very hard to have a separate stack where you say, okay, now all digital products are done from there, but it's with this company or this custom uh, code we have and so on, rather than simply saying, hey, I have already admins, I have Salesforce admin trailblazers, they know already Salesforce, this is customer engagement, let's do that directly from Salesforce. So in this case, you don't need to be a Web3 developer, all this is already ready for you, it's just clicks. So that's number one. Number two, I will show you later in the demo, is 
right now, many brands that release the NFT, as I was saying, they release the NFTs and then they were like, oh, we need to manage the utility. And we have customers that are super engaged and we need to reply to them on a very regular basis. And we don't know where they are and which kind of, kind of utility they already consumed or not. Okay, let's use Excel. I'm like, wow, you're using Excel to manage who has get, 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 uh, got like the utility and so on and so on. That's crazy. Why don't you use a CRM? So bring back the data. Like it's as a regular customer engagement. Use the same tools you have because if you want to send after campaigns, marketing campaign, if you want to do e-commerce, if you want to do all kinds of other things, like you don't want to reinvent your stack. You want to have one single stack where you can do everything. So that I would say would say would be the two main reason. After that, there is fifty other reasons like the contract audited for you already, so that's costing much much less for you. Super easy to implement and so on and so on. But I will not go and uh, go for all uh, the item. So that's basically my collection deployed. Now, if I want, and that's not part of our product, but if you want, you can of course create a site. So at that stage, I can uh, go in the regular uh, site builder. So I will go in setup site. You could create your site um, and deploy it uh, as usual. Yeah, in this case, in this demo, I know that I need to go from here. That's the issue with my demos is that quite fun. I'm using like all the latest and greatest of uh, uh, it's, this org is literally getting updated on a daily basis. But so I know that there are some things I broken and I never took the time to fix them. So I'll go on the site. I think it was this one. Anyway, it's a bit less important this one, but basically it's just like if you want, then you could sell the NFT on your own website. So at that stage, you could connect the wallet, for example, and then you can see the checkout experience and you can, for example, say, okay, yes, I want to um, do this. I can connect the wallet. In this, in this case, I have two buttons because I uh, connected my site a little bit differently or configured my site a little bit differently, but I could come here as a consumer or as a customer of the customer. Uh, so I'm going on this website. I'm seeing like, hey, you have this kind of cool NFT. Can I have this? Yes. And then I can mint the token, for example, and that will allow me to sign, pay the gas fees and get the token on my wallet. One other thing that I would say would be even better than this experience would simply be like, hey, don't reinvent the wheel. You have already a checkout. You are already doing checkout for regular products. Just let customers buy the nft we against fiat against regular money like uh, usd euro whatever you want um but then behind the scene the brand is paying the gas fee coding the method sending the nft to the right wallet that's fully feasible as well we do that with ledger um but basically that's uh, that is a method on our smart contract that can be called and that would be very easy um all right so that's for the site and i'll take the question and then after that i will show you what we connect so um, Mikolaj, I'll, uh, how do we track customer? I'll show you that just after. So that will be part of the demo. And then what about NFTs with real world backed assets? Um, so I think really the story there is that is if you have like real world, uh, backed asset, it's the, nearly the concept of digital twin, uh, or digital or whatever people want to, to use this as a, uh, as a terminology, but all in all, um, no problem. Like that's the beauty of NFT management is that you, if you think about it, the first part of the demo using the product workspace, creating the product, the variation, all that you would do exactly the same for a physical product. So you could literally have one collection of physical product, one collection of digital product, and you just say, okay, we link the two and whatever you get, for example, the uh, real world version, we send you as well um the nft the brand pay the gas fees and so on that would be feasible um another part would be more like hey let's take the adidas use case where they didn't drop with us their, their nft but i like their use case i think they did an amazing job so they release the nfts and then after you could come burn your nft get the uh, claim the physical good and get a new version of the nft and so on what's uh, what's happening there is same story here you could do okay create a collection we give you the nft you redeem the nft we track in salesforce yes did you uh, redeem it perfect we give you now either access to the physical product or discount or whatever you want so that's really um how uh, it would work if the case of the consideration of like if the product um is stolen funnily enough so i see two things on the market one is 
many, many brands are coming back to us and say, can we do certificate of uh, authenticity? I'm like, yeah, you could. Uh, but again, like I have a certificate of authenticity in paper for a couple of uh, goods I have. Do I really care about that paper certificate of authenticity? No. Maybe one day if I resell a watch or whatever. But at the same time, like that's a bit of a miss because the only time I will use this is when I will sell the product. So it's not great for customer engagement. So what I'm telling brands more and more is saying, guys, instead of thinking of certificate of authenticity, think about certificate of ownership. Like I have this watch, I have this product, I have this whatever. Um, I have this NFT as well. And that's giving me already access to something. Give me an experience. Like if I have this certificate of authenticity, which is now a certificate of ownership, if I go to your shop and show it to you, I might not have the watch on my wrist right now, but I have the NFT. Can you give me something? Uh, it's really that kind of concept. And then there is some brands that asked us even further, like, could we use this as kind of keys, uh, which is really far-fetched, but at the same time, pretty real, which is, hey, these NFTs, there is one thing we did, which is you can pause the NFT. You can pause the collection, you can pause the NFT as, as well. Pausing the NFT means if it's stolen, we literally uh, make sure, and that's not Salesforce, it's the brand to decide, uh, we can pause the NFT for a while until we uh, check if it's really stolen or not. So what will happen is that at that stage, that NFT cannot be transferred anymore. It cannot be moved anymore. So it's staying on that wallet until uh, it's clarified. So for example, if you would lose your NFT, you have um, a physical good. The physical good work only if you have the NFT, um suddenly it's stolen your good physical good doesn't work anymore what we could do is pause the nft investigate uh, and that would be the brand to do of course uh, they can in investigate what happened and then if they want they can always always you know create a new uh, nft uh, but then on that side there will be a lot of complexity because it might be a separate contract and so on so that's where that would be much more tricky um but that's a far-fetched use case so far of saying hey i have an nft you Kind of put the NFT on a physical asset that's unlocking the fact that, that I can even use the physical assets and so on. It might come, by the way. It, I think o over the next year, you might see that more and more. All right, so where do we bring the data? Um, back to uh, the question of how do we track if customer purchase the token? So, what we did there is that so you have category objects, you have the product object, but in fact, we have a set of new products, uh, new, sorry, uh, objects in Salesforce. Crypto products, crypto transaction, crypto everything. But basically here, I'm just going to go on crypto products. Uh, that's one. And I also will take crypto uh, wallet. Because like this, you can see what's going on. So if someone come on the collection and buy uh, the NFT, we are monitoring the collection. So at that stage, we'll create the wallet in Salesforce. It doesn't mean we create the wallet in terms of like, it's a wallet that you can use. We just say it's a wallet record, it's a customer. That's a customer of yours. The big difference with Web2 is that you know, the customer of yours, you don't know the name, you know the address. That's the only thing you know so far. But you still need to serve the customer. So at that stage, we can say, okay, you have the address. What we can do is get a risk score. So we get that from chain analysis. Uh, we can see if there is any risk. So for example, if that wallet has been used in money laundering, in hacks, and so on. If that's the case, you could potentially say, okay, this wallet has a high risk score. We denied access to our collection. So this wallet cannot buy from us. So that's a production for uh, brands. We have to say, okay, we don't want to receive funds that has been stolen, funds that has been uh, used for money laundering. We can block wallets from doing business with us. Um, that's one thing, but most more, much more importantly is like, okay, now that's my customer. How do I know that customer? Well, you don't, right? Now it's pretty anonymous. That's the whole point of, uh, of Web3. But very different than Web2, where Web2, you would say, OK, now I have your name, your email, and I'm going to spam you like crazy until you buy or not from me. Here, you could say, OK, you have my token now. Can I offer something to you, Something, some utility, some customer engagement? Can I give you an experience on a website? And to get to that website and to get to 10% discount or whatever, we would like to learn more about you. So if you want to share more information, do you want to share more information with, with us or not? You can stay anonymous, or you could tell us your email address or whatever. But at that stage, if you tell us your email address, then we need to give you back something. It will not give us data just for the sake of giving data. So that's really the aim of the game for brands now is to say, 
okay, I have the, the wallet address, it's unknown. How can I provide utility, discounts, all kind of other things where we are going to say, let's try to link this back to an account. Um, and like this, we can serve the customer better. So that's literally what's, what's going to happen little by little. You could also say, that's never going to happen. All these customers will never tell us who they are. That's fine as well. You still treat them as customers. So you still have a CRM, you, you track in the CRM, and then you can say who was the, the token, who get the uh, loyalty, um, which tiers of, of loyalty, and so on and so on. So that's on the crypto wallets. And on the crypto product, same story. We can, for example, I'm going to take whichever year uh, that I have. If I open this uh, token, you will see that this token got minted by my wallet. It's now owned by this wallet. In this case, you see the name simply because these wallets have been uh, linked to a user. Otherwise, it would be just uh, wallets, as I showed you, um, with just the wallet address. And then you know the product, you know the, the metadata, you know the image, and so on. And that's basically going to change. So if that person would transfer the NFT, then we know, OK, that NFT has been transferred to another wallet, maybe named, maybe not named, fine, up to the brands to give the utility, give the customer engagement, and build the relation with the customer. That's really Web3 Connect in terms of you can bring the data back from the wallet, you can bring the data back for the uh, NFT with owning it. And what's very important is that you can do that with also a category or a collection that is uh, not deployed from Salesforce. So if you would want to do this, it would be as simple as saying, okay, let's import a collection. You would name the collection whatever. So, okay, great, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to take one of my smart contracts here. So that's a smart contract from uh, Scotch and Soda. Um, that we, we did some work with them. And you could say, okay, in this case, I just want to bring the data in my uh, CRM. You can only uh, bring data from collection you own or you have a very strong relation to. That's in our legal term. So uh, we don't want you to bring any type of data that is not uh, owned by you or that you have no relation to it. But basically here, I can type in the address. And if I save, it will bring all the wallets, bring all the products. And now, as a brand, I can start engaging with the customer. Um, all right, so I'm checking on the questions. Uh, all right, so last question. I mean, the, the next question from Kinga. So I'm working every day on marketing cloud, um, combination of SM, uh, SFMC and sales cloud. We let FC Studio work with a connector with sales cloud somehow. Um, so the story will be uh, done like this. I will explain a bit further. So the beauty is that when you think about it, as I was saying, like the objects themselves are native. In this demo org, you'll see that I have a crypto transaction. I have two objects, I think, for it, uh, custom, but that disappeared. So all this will be standard objects. Um, so you see crypto transaction, so that's the, the official one we'll use. That was me testing stuff around. Uh, but all, all these objects are standard objects, which means that if you want to link them to a campaign, if you want to link them to any other object in Salesforce Core, up for you. Go crazy. Like build your own use case. How, how do you want to use this? We build this in a, in a platform way. So you know we then come with very dedicated use case. We have like a steel thread, but if you want to use the NFT in a completely different ways to engage a customer, fine as well. If you want to link that back to sales cloud or whatever else, you can do it. The second thing that is important is when you think about um, the on the marketing cloud side, when you look at marketing cloud, generally speaking, that's where you send um, emails, generally speaking, uh, with it, emails, text, and so on. You cannot yet. Um, ping a wallet if it's unknown. So right now, very hard, you could airdrop, you could send an NFT to the wallet, but I feel like that's a little bit spamming, so I, I would not recommend. Um, but you could say, okay, this wallet, I want to notify them. Right now, there is not really solutions for that. We are working with a couple of Web3 startups in that, uh, in, that, uh, in that area, but there is no, I would say, common standard yet to notify wallet. So that's where I think it's interesting to have, for example, I will take, uh, my friend Lauren Bailey, which is the person we always use in our demo. In this case, for Lauren, um, we know already her details, like all our, uh, all our information. We might have sales data, we might have service data, like 
all the information, case, and so on, maybe related to physical product, to digital product, doesn't matter again, it's just uh, customer engagement. You engage a customer with the same tool you have before, um, but you have also the Web3 data, and you are like, oh, in this case, Lauren has four wallets. Uh, you can, of course, contact her because you have her phone number or email. You have, of course, collected the consent before and so on, so that's extremely important. And then she might call you and say, hey, I lost my NFT, it got stolen, I'm super sad, can you help? And then you are going to say, well, actually, did you check on the right wallet? Because I see you have four wallets and the NFT is on this wallet, for example. Oh, you're right, sorry, I checked on my wrong right, thank you for helping. But I think that's really the type of use case, the type of uh, thing we are going to see, is that right now, the customer service of Web3 is not so great, simply because you know, getting that data, getting that kind of uh, information is pretty hard and pretty hard to, to uh, deliver. So that's more like connecting sales cloud, connecting service cloud, connecting, connecting marketing cloud. Uh, if the payment is done in fiat, then I would say the, the way to do this is simply to say, okay, what you will get, you will get an order. So probably here, I'm going to look at my objects. Um, you'll get an order like this. So let's say you get an order. Uh, and let's say it's this one, in this case, it's a fake uh, record, like a, it's just a pure demo data. But let's say this one is the order you received. And let's go further and say, in that order, you have two products that have been purchased. One was the physical product, one was the NFT itself. Or maybe even the NFT was given away with the with that order. What you will do is you have two order line items, one for the product, the physical one, one for the uh, digital product. At that stage, you want to say, okay, we need to ship the information. We need to, we need to ship the product themselves. How do you ship a physical product? Well, you'll create an integration with whichever uh, providers, FedEx, USPS, whatever, and you will ship the physical product. How do you ship the digital products? Uh, in this case, it's, you use the blockchain. So at that scale, that, in, that, in that case, uh, what we recommend is to say, we don't provide the wallets, right? But for example, we have a uh, um, close partnership with, uh, with Ledger. And basically we can say, hey, you have a Ledger Enterprise account. Um, that's a wallet that you can call via API. So you will call our voucher API. So the voucher API is just, um, the voucher itself is protecting every method. So not only you need to have the right role, but there is extra protection on every of our methods so that we don't have bots coming on our smart contract and saying, hey, you know what? Let's, let me come with a bot and start minting all the token or whatever. So all these methods are protected. If you don't have the right parameters, which is basically the voucher, it will just not work. It will, you can try to mint as much as you want, it will not work. Um, so here, what you could do is saying, okay, I got my order, I got my wallet. I would say here on my category, I'm going to show you that quickly. On my category, I would say my wallet is put as a minter. So I would say, I think even maybe in this org, I have actually, uh, no, I don't have uh, any wallet yet, but I will say this wallet is minter. I need to do that before the planning the smart contract, by the way. Uh, it can be updated after, but, um, and so active. So I would say, okay, now this wallet can mint. What would happen? You would create the order. The order would say, FedEx shipment, set, sh ship me the physical product. And then digital product, great. Call that wallet, that wallet, give the voucher to it. The voucher is going to be used as parameters and the wallet is going to come and call. In this case, that's an old version of our contract. We have a new version, but there is a, a method called mint token 2, T-O. Uh, and then you would call that method and send the NFT directly on the wallet of the customer. So that's another way to do it. Uh, and like this, at that stage, the brand receive fiat payments, Euro, USD. For the consumer, so the customer of the customer, so easy because they don't have to go and buy crypto and so on. It's just like, hey, I just check out the same exact way I check out in general. Um, they don't have to pay the transaction fee as the end consumer. So that's amazing. Uh, the same way as more and more, we don't really pay, pay the shipping cost. Uh, so same story here. So the brand is receiving fiat pay the, the gas fee, so the, the brand itself still need to uh, pay with crypto, the gas fee that you cannot avoid, that's fine. Um, and then you as a consumer receive the NFT on your wallet um, and all this was completely transparent to you. You didn't get all the 
create the complexity of Web3 for you. And when I'm saying that, maybe that consumer doesn't have a wallet, fine as well. We have partners there that can provide um, the end consumer wallet uh, via email, via different methods and so on. So that's really, I think like more and more, you see you have different pieces of the puzzle and you can regroup them based on what exactly is your audience. Is it a Web3 audience? Is it a Web2 audience? Um, how do you want to tackle the, the wallets? How do you want to tackle the means? And so on and so on. So that's what I see. So that's pretty much it. We still have five minutes, but I think we covered a lot. I hope it was uh, clear. Uh, but like this, you have the latest and, and greatest on like what we are doing. And um, that's pretty much it. Well, that is great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gary. That, uh, that gave us uh, definitely a, an incredible insight of uh, what is being, uh, what has been built, you know, behind the scenes. Yep. Um, and I know we only have uh, a few minutes there, but um, any other questions from, from the attendees, the audience here? All right. Then... I do have one question. All right. Go How are we going to expect this? Um, in terms of GA, general yeah. release, what time frame are you aiming? So time time frame is spring. Um, so it will be probably over the next two three months maximum. Probably in in one month, but that's uh, under safe harbor. So you know things are in flux. The product is ready completely technically. Um, it's just a matter of like when is the right time to release uh, and so on. So that's basically where we are. Um, so right now spring. And then we'll see uh, if that's happening or not. We can yeah. speak again in March if you want. I see. And in terms of um, sell, uh, sandbox access, is this something that um, once it is released that we could expect this as consultants to be in the yes. sandbox? So okay. same way as um, you would do for any other product, you can raise a case with Salesforce, request uh, this to be enabled um, on your... I would say maybe more on a dev org if you if you have one on the sandbox it depends if you work with a, a customer uh, or if, if it's a sandbox of yours but basically generally speaking um, if you work with a customer uh, with a brand then the brand should contact their account exec and the account exec will um, deal with the provisioning and so on if it's just for you i would say go sign up for a dev org um and then uh and then raise a case to get this enabled on the other org uh, and i see kevin and king has, has questions so what level of customization um amazingly enough so we didn't speak architecture and i'm going to speak architecture in two minutes um but the the story there is we have core objects so core data model many core apis and so on on top of that, we have two managed package. One is Web3 Connect, the other one is NFT management. You install the package, that's super straightforward. Um, and then from there, it's actually, when you think about the setup, it's going pretty fast. It's managing, uh, basically changing the page layout. So making sure the buttons is there, um, making sure that people have access to the right object. So crypto wallet, crypto products, crypto transaction, and so on. Um, setting up a few perms for, for the user. But it's not crazy complex. So we saw customers implement this in less than two weeks. Of course, some customers will take more time. Some customers will take more, uh, more. But literally, uh, we had a pilot customer. They did the full project three weeks, uh, from creative one week, implementing two weeks done. That was the the way they did it. In terms of certification, um, right now no certification what we'll do more and more is we will um, release we have uh, enablement videos so i want to basically give kind of a little bit the same as i gave in this uh, call but much more detailed in terms of what's the architecture what are the managed package what kind of issues you could have if you install managed package if you don't have the right perm and so on so we have a couple of enablement videos um, we are going to get that for our ga so as soon as I have them, and once we are GA, I can share that with, the, with this group, or I will share that with Tiffany. And like this, you can see the videos. But basically, uh, that was uh, the aim here is to say, let's make sure that you have everything recorded, all the trainings, no certification so far. We'll see how the market is picking up this, uh, if people like this or not. 
uh, and then we'll see if we need to create a certification for that. Yeah, there is also trails on, on Trailhead, that's correct. Super. All right. That's great. Well, Gary, Max, thank you very much for uh, taking the time out to speak to us. We all definitely appreciate that. Um, okay. For those who attended our topic on INFTs, that'll be rescheduled. Uh, but I think this has been a fantastic session. So thank you again, Gary and Max. And we look forward to more news from the team. Thank you. And thank you all for attending. See you. Bye-bye.